A reading from 1 Kings. The, the word of the Lord came to Elijah, saying, Go now to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and live there, for I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he set out and went to Zarephath. When he came to the gate of the town, a widow was there, gathering sticks. He called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel, so that I may drink. As she was going to bring it, he called out to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. But she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of meal in a jar, and a little oil in a jug. I am now gathering a couple of sticks, so that I may go home and prepare it for myself and my son, so that we may eat it and die. Elijah said to her, Do not be afraid. Go and do as you have said. But first make me a little cake of it and bring it to me. And afterward make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, The jar of meal will not be emptied, and the jug of oil will not fail until the day of the Lord sends rain on the earth. She went and did as Elijah said, so that she as well as her she as well as he and her household ate for many days. The jar of meal was not empty, neither did the jug of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
second reading is from Hebrews. Christ did not enter the sanctuary made by the human hands and to merge a copy of the true one, but he entered into heaven itself, now appeared in the presence of God and on the behalf, nor was it to offer himself again and again as the high priest enters the holy place year after year with his blood that's not his own. For then he would have to suffer again and again and since the foundation of the world. But it is as he appeared once for all at the end of the age to remove the sins by sacrificing himself. And just as it appointed for moral to die once and after that the judgment, so Christ has offered once to bear the sins of many who appear a second time, not to deal with in sins, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus taught, he said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have the best seats in the synagogues and places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses, and for the sake of appearance, they say long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which are worth a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, Truly I tell you, This poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks to the number of festivals that we have been celebrating here at Atonement, it has been some time since we have heard from Mark's Gospel. Today we find ourselves dropped into the tail end of a series of events that have taken place at the temple. As you've heard from me before, Mark likes to split a story in half and insert another one into the middle of it to help make a point or to help us understand why he is telling us those stories. However, sometimes, as in this case with these temple stories, they are told together as a kind of theme. One might think, based on our readings today, uh, that the theme is sacrificial giving. After all, we also heard the story of the widow giving up Uh, We heard the story of the widow giving up her last two coins, paired with the story of the widow who gives up her last meal, or at least so she thought, to Elijah. And it is not wrong to understand these stories as ones of discipleship and how we might give all of ourselves to following God. After all, Jesus has made similar points in other places. But I think there is something else going on here. Throughout this section of Mark, there has been a conflict between Jesus and the religious authorities. It is not surprising, after all, this section begins with Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem, so we know that it is the last week of his life, or at least before the death and then resurrection. It began with his cleansing of the temple, and that certainly set them against him, because from that moment, Mark tells us, they were seeking to find a way to kill him. And while hanging out in the temple, his authority is questioned. They tried to trick him with questions about taxes, 
and then about marriage and the resurrection. Through all of this, Jesus is not only sly, but he also demonstrates how they have fallen short of their calling and role as religious people. Then, just before the part that we read today, Jesus is asked about which is the greatest commandment. His answer is, of course, to love God and to love one's neighbor as themselves. The scribe who asked him admits that he is right, and not only right, but that such a thing is greater than any sacrifice that can be offered in the temple. Jesus then tells him that he, after saying that, is not far from the kingdom of God. Mark then tells us <laughs> that no one dared to ask him any questions after that. So Jesus rounds everything up by talking about what it means to be the Messiah. And then finally, we have what we heard today. It should be pointed out that at the beginning with the temple cleansing, Jesus quotes a section from the scroll of Jeremiah. That section of Jeremiah also takes place in the temple. And it also brings up the question about the role of the temple and the role of the religious among the people. Jesus said, has this house become, uh, uh, excuse me, has this house which is called in my name become a den of robbers? What might draw the picture into sharp relief as to why Mark ends this section with the widow's gift is that it would, is what would be on the minds of those who first heard this story. After hearing Jesus quote that section of Jeremiah, it also says, if you do not oppress the immigrant, the orphan, and the widow, then I will dwell with you in this place. The temple, the whole religious system, should not be there to eat the widow's house and to take her last two coins. That is simply oppressing her. Following God should lead to something that is life-giving. This is the fall season. It is the typical time when a congregation might be asking you about your intentions to pledge to the congregation so that they can build their budget for the upcoming year. And hey, we're not far off from that. We just launched our capital campaign last week. And it is tempting to appeal to a text like this to ask you to give. And this context would certainly make this text easier to talk about if we were just talking about money. I say that as somebody, uh, those of you who have been around here for a while know, I never use this text to talk about money. But in the context of the story in which it appears, it is about how we follow Jesus and how we treat our neighbors. The greatest commandments remain. Love God, love your neighbor as yourself your neighbor who is a stranger in the land, the orphan, the widow, the enemy. Without this widespread love, the religion is useless. Here, as Lutherans in the river wards of Philadelphia at both St. Michael's and Atonement, we know our call. It is to follow where God is building community as we will see here today with Elijah. We are to follow where God's building community. Maybe it's going to get odd, different, or challenging. Dare I say risky in some ways, but to the depth of my being, I believe this is a community that God has built and gifted to face what lies ahead. 
So, come. Splash in the bath. Come to the table. God is with us and for us. I promise the meal and the oil will not give out. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm.